Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I'm lucky to have with me today my good friend Corey Steiner, who's superintendent of the Northern Cass School District in North Dakota. Uh, Corey, thanks for being with us today. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, let's just dive right in. Um, tell us about how Northern Cass has responded to the pandemic. What does learning and teaching look like? Um, how are you supporting families and staff? What's going on? Yeah, uh, well, one, thanks for having me, Scott. Uh, yeah, it's certainly a, a time of uncertainty and, and a lot of time of people having to develop some really different skill sets. Uh, at Northern Cass, you know, we, we operate, we're in a cornfield. Uh, we don't have any communities around us. So our district's about 400 square miles. So we cover a pretty good amount of distance. Uh, for our, our part, we had a couple things that we had to do right away. And, and one of those was to figure out meals for families. Uh, when we, we served meals for the first day, we served 35, and four weeks later, we're at 350. Uh, but this is not a place where you can just drive out here and pick it up. So actually, we have about six different routes where people are driving out and delivering meals to families and communities, even communities outside our district. And we even made the commitment that because our district is so big, we'll serve families that are even on the outskirts of our district that don't go to our schools because they, they have that need also. Uh, so the meals was a big one. Um, you know, getting materials to people. You know, some schools just oh, swing by, grab it, uh, we'll put a table outside. Uh, just not a possibility when people are driving 30 miles to get here. So we deliver out on the bus routes. We run all of our regular bus routes on Monday and deliver materials and then pick up materials. Uh, we had to get creative because we don't have a public library, so we have a bookmobile now. And our media specialist takes it out and goes to uh, five of our communities where learners and families can check out books. And, you know, we used to have a policy like a lot of places, you can have three books out at a time. We said that all that goes away. And if we have some books that, that get damaged, so be it. We'll figure that out. But we're not going to charge families for that. Give them something to do. And reading is always something they can do when they're learning at home. Um, you know, so that was one. You know, we had that huge environmental cleaning and we actually, before the real strict guidelines got in, we brought in kids. We brought in about five kids who said, hey, I could use some money and, and I'd like some community service. And they actually cleaned for a week straight right along with our, our custodial staff. Uh, and so we did a top to bottom cleaning in three days, which, you know, really was quite a remarkable thing to be able to, to accomplish. Um, and then, the big thing obviously was we needed to figure out how do we get distance learning ready. Right. Um, we had kids with devices six through 12, that wasn't an issue, uh, but none of our elementary kids took them home. So that was the first thing we did, cleaned them, got them ready and built a day where families could come in 10 at a time. And this was before really the strict guidance got put in place to get devices out. Uh, then we met with our educators and, and we kind of had three expectations around for our educators. One is grace is going to be our value and our, our thing we're going to stand pat on. We're going to give kids grace. We're going to give families grace. Um, we're going to focus on some core material. We're not going to push too hard to move too far ahead, but we're going to introduce content. Uh, that's got to be through whether it's Zoom or Google Hangouts, but it's going to be some direct instruction. Uh, and then we really challenged them to get yourself on screen castomatic, find ways to record yourself. Uh, and though, so all of our people have office hours and they quickly found that kids during those office hours just want to talk. And, and our people asked, is that okay? We said, yes, just talk. Like that grace part is about relationships too. So we have people that check in. We've started holding like senior class meetings because this time is tough for our seniors. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're staring at no true end, no senior prom. Uh, and so we've been meeting with them to talk through what's going on. And now we've asked them, give us a different way to do prom and graduation. So our seniors are giving us feedback on that. Um, and, you know, that, that's been an interesting dynamic. Um, uh, from my perspective, I write a daily memo to our entire district every day. And about three quarters of it is positivity. I sh highlight things our kids are doing uh, that teachers put in and say, hey, this kid's handing all their work in. And I put that in the memo. Uh, I highlight positive emails parents send us. We, got, we have been flooded with the positivity from them. Uh, we've, we've had to approach a couple things different. We did two really cool things. Uh, we held a parade 
And because we, we basically serve eight communities, the parade was 75 miles long and four and a half hours long. Uh, and, and we drove into every community. At one point, our, our caravan was three miles long uh, because that's the relationship side. Last night, we had a drive-in movie in our parking lot. Uh, so we, we played the Lion King. We had 120 cars show up for that. Um, you know, so it, it's been, that's the relationship side. Um, we've challenged our educators to also be innovative. This is the time for that. Like, like we're trying to avoid like, oh, here's a packet, complete the packet. We do a lot of that with our younger levels. Um, but what we've also said is every packet, anything like that is going to be attached to a Zoom call where you just sit and talk for a little bit. You let people share, you connect with them relationship wise. Um, and, and that's went really well. Uh, you know, we, we survey our parents and kids every other week, every teacher surveys them. We grab that information and then we, we look at it and we, we make small adjustments. Our educators have been fantastic about really meeting the needs of parents and understanding they're working, that some of the kids don't do work till Friday nights because they take care of their brothers and sisters all week. Uh, so it's been, you know, it's been a lot of different pieces that we've had to put together. Um, we're standards-based grading pre-K through 12, so we don't have conversations about pass-fail or failing or Ds. Where kids finish, they pick up next year. So that, that's been a lot off our people's plate to say, oh, I don't have to worry about that part. They just come back next year and we continue with where they're at. You know, seniors, obviously, we, we're figuring that part out uh, and we'll work with them. I've got a lot of people that have went away from some packets and they're saying, what project would you like to do? And they're using some of the stuff we learned from you and, and developing some project-based lessons mm -hmm. uh, and doing things like that. Uh, AP people looked and said, the workload's too much. Let's reduce that down. Uh, you know, just, it, it's been a, a great community effort. And, and it's been with parents, it's been with learners, and it's been with all of our educators too. Cool, that was awesome. Um, so, Corey, obviously uh, you're developing some new skill sets and mindsets here as part of the work. What do you think might carry over till next year? Yeah, man, th that's, that's the most beautiful question out of all of this. And I, I worked with someone the other day and they, they said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, and, and they're right. They're absolutely right. And I think if we come back and when we can bring kids back face to face, if we revert back to what we were doing, we have lost what might be the, one of the greatest opportunities in the history of education. Uh, and, and man, I hope we don't do that. And, and we're having that conversation with our people to say, what have you done? What here have you done that can transfer back into your learning center? Right. Uh, so this idea of, you know, you've always stood in front of the class and, and gave some direct instruction, but you haven't needed to do that now. So is there ways to bring that back right. and have you work with small coaching sessions? Mm -hmm. We were putting a lot of that in place this year as we moved to a competency-based system. But I think what it's done is it's made our people realize like, hey, I can do this. This actually can be done. Uh, it's, it's manageable within reason. Um, we, we pay our teachers in it for an extra three hours every week to engage in professional learning that they'll be able to use next year also. So we've also looked at one of the things that I'm going to change my mind on, and I never thought I would ever say this, is there's no reason that all of our professional development has to be face-to-face. -face. Right. I, I can trust our people to develop plans to get to micro-credentials, to build their own learning plan around their goals and their, and their student feedback. So that's one of the things. That's going to be a new skill set for us. We're going to design our professional learning with the idea it doesn't have to be face-to-face, -face, and it can be at a variety of times throughout the day, throughout the weeks, throughout the year. Um, I think if there's one thing that's got to come back different is our family engagement. Like we did the parade. I, I'm not sure why we haven't ever done that before. We did the drive-in movie because of our location. Why haven't we done something like that before? You know, when a, a learner doesn't get in contact with their educator, so they don't respond to an email or they're not turning in work, um, we reach out to them. So we give a call to that learner and our principal calls and our dean calls, I might call, our educators call, is everything okay? Not, you didn't turn in work. Are you okay? Right. Are you stressed out? What can I do to help? And then if they say, no, I've got it, I'm on top of it, but nothing gets done, then we call parents and we say, hey, can we have your help? Let's figure this out together. We don't have due dates. 
we have suggestions. So there's a pacing guide to say, if you wanna stay on pace, hand this in, but we're gonna be flexible on that. We're gonna do more of that next year. We were doing some of it, more of that will come in. Uh, family engagement has to change. Uh, I've reached out to more parents in the last month than ever. And, and I'm, I'm, it's a little bit of shame on me of why I went away from doing that because I had done that earlier in my career. Um, I, I know that I call people and instead of always being bad news, I'm asking them first thing is, how are you doing? Man, this is tough. Thank you for what you're doing. And I'm like, I can do that regularly. Sure. Whether a kid makes them accept, I can do that all the time. And, and our other people can do that. We're calling people. Um, one of the conversations we have that I think is going to be quite unique is we're saying our contract goes from eight to four. What if we cut a half hour of our contract off and we just ask you to make Zoom calls with families, with the whole family? Once a, once a week, pick a family Zoom call with the whole family and just say, how are things going? And share what you're doing there. Uh, we've had parents say they know more about what their kids are doing in school than ever before. And I said, but that's because we've had to do that. So that has to come back and, and be in place. And then the other thing that we've learned is a lot of the things we did in our classrooms, some of those worksheets, some of those assignments, they aren't as necessary as we thought they were. So people are starting to think much bigger about how can a kid show me their learning. And, and I have people calling one another educators and saying, hey, this kid did this amazing presentation. I think they could get English credit. What do you think? And our PLCs went from just the ELA people together to the math people to now I have elementary people working with high school people. Our CTE people who are, they're singletons. This is so cool. They're, they're Zooming from people around the country. So our marketing teacher has a group in North Dakota and, and the Midwest they're meeting with. And I'm like, well, why weren't we doing that before? And, and part of that was my mindset of, well, PLCs face-to-face -face has to be done that way. You know, so it's, I, I think, it, you know, that's a lot of stuff that I feel we've done exceptionally well that has to come back in next year. Uh, but the biggest thing is going to be we have to rethink family engagement. The idea, you know, our biggest thing is driving out here is tough for families. Right. So we can engage families in their home. And we have the skill set, I think, to do that now more than ever. And the last thing I'll say is we have had to ask kids for feedback and actually do something with it. You know, I, I, I'll look back to my 20 years ago when I taught, I'd say, tell me what you want me to do different. I'd look at it and I'd be like, oh, well, that's great. They'll forget about it. I got a new group of kids. I'll just keep doing it the way I've been doing it. Our people have done a great job of listening to feedback. And we realize that kids do have a really good feel for what they need. And we got to re be respectful of that. Fantastic. Uh, Corey, so we got a minute or two left here. What are seem to be some of those key things that you all have done that have worked really well as a leadership team? and what seem to be some of the challenges at this stage? So for, as our leadership team, I think, uh, you know, probably two or three things that I think really work. The, the phone calls, and I know people say, well, duh, but phone calls, not emails, calling people to, to ask how they're doing, making sure that it's not a question. I listen to my elementary principal call and say, how are you doing? You know, did you ever think we'd deal with something? And she'll ask four or five questions before she gets to, hey, here's what I need you to do academically with your child. And, and so it's not, a, it's about the people, it's about the relationship and not the work. So I've, I've heard our, our administrators doing a great job of that. Um, supporting educators differently, um, make, giving them grace to say, we're gonna let you figure it out. And when you need help, come to us. Uh, using our instructional coaches as more of emotional and well being support. Uh, just, it, it's been a, a totally different approach to how we thought, how we provide coaching. Uh, it used to be I have to be in your classroom. Now it's just conversations. So those are the big things I think that we've seen happen. Uh, in terms of the challenges, I think there, there lies a great challenge of how, when we can come back face to face, are we going to deal with all the trauma? And I'm not talking the trauma of like, well, you know, families throughout the country, there's going to be some issues with abuse and kids that weren't able to eat and uh, families that were laid off. But Every kid that comes back into everybody's system has trauma. Them not being in school at this time for a month is trauma. Right. And, and so we're going to have to be better at trauma-informed practices. And, and I don't know that we're ready for that. Maybe other people are. But we're going to have to be very diligent that when we come back, it can't be about, oh, we got to get caught up because we missed this standard when we were gone. It's got to be about 
I got to figure out how you are, build a solid relationship, and then we figure out where we need to go. Uh, and then the, the last challenge uh, for us uh, as a group and stuff is to, to make sure, like, how do you keep moving ahead? Because this is our chance. This is our opportunity to really change education as a whole. We feel like we've been on the forefront, um, but our people are stressed. They're tired. They're wore out. They're, they're parenting and teaching their own kids and then trying to teach another group of kids. So it's like, how do we move ahead and keep the well-being of our people always on the, as the most important thing? Absolutely. Cool. Corey, this is all great stuff. Anything else you want to share here at the end? No, I, I guess one thing, you know, the one thing I think that I think education, public education in this country has had taken a step back in terms of credibility. I don't know why that is. It just seems like it was. Uh, I think right now we ha we have proven educationally across this country that not only are we important, but we're important for the right reasons. And that's not about teaching content. That's about loving kids and loving families. Uh, the spirit of, of what education was supposed to be has come back during this time. Uh, and, and, I, and I just can't be thankful enough. I mean, our frontline workers are the ones doing the most important work. And I think our teachers are that group right in behind them uh, that are really the fabric that's holding this country together in such a tough time. Cool. Thanks so much, Corey, for your time today. I know how busy you are, Northern Cass. Uh, your community is lucky to have you all working so hard on their behalf. Appreciate your time. Thank you.